After Debo, Levine, and Vooch dropped 89 on the road, here's every reason for why the Chicago Bulls are looking unstoppable. With Lonzo still on health and safety, plus Caruso dealing with an ankle sprain, stepping up in their absence, Kobe White, Ayo Dosumu, Troy Brown Jr., and Matt Thomas stepped up to combine for 37 points, displaying the second layer to Shy towns attack. Let's delve into the aspects of the Bulls' blistering offensive attack right now, and stay tuned to see if I think Chicago's proved themselves as top contenders. Before continuing, only 12% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops and I'll follow you back. Links in the description for both those platforms. Since the beginning of August, the current vid you're watching is the 8th time we've broken down the Chicago Bulls, as the team has suddenly become a staple on this channel. Mark Eversley, the team's GM, along with other members in Chicago's front office, have done a tremendous job of making a few key roster moves which have helped to turn around the fortunes of the Bulls organization. The game in the ATL last night for Chicago offered us a taste of the mental toughness and talent 1-15 through 15 on this Bulls roster. On the second night of a back-to-back -back and in a hostile environment on the road, the Chicago Bulls got a big offensive night from all their key performers. Both Zach Levine and DeMar DeRozan were firing on all cylinders throughout the whole game, as they scored 30 and 35 points respectively. Nikola Vucevic stepped up in the fourth quarter, knocking down some crucial timely shots from distance to help seal the deal, as Big Vooch finished with 24 of his own. Between the three of them, they combined to mercilessly rip apart opposing coach Nate McMillan's defensive game plan, and as I mentioned in the intro, they combined for 89 on route to a 130-118 W over the Atlanta Hawks, who are no joke. The Big Three's efforts didn't just come in the scoring department individually, as Levine posted 9 assists, while Debo had 10 dimes, and Vooch had 17 rebounds. It was all a part of what contributed to an extremely solid and efficient offensive outing for the team overall. The Bulls shot 54.8% from the fields and were lighting it up from distance, hitting 48.6% of their deep range bombs. Chicago did a perfect job of just valuing their possessions as they only turned the ball over 10 times. But Trey Young's return from protocol proved to be troublesome for them early on. While Kobe White's been great recently, and he had a decent 13 on the night, Kobe had a tough time sticking with Young, which helped Atlanta take as much as a nine point advantage in the opening frame. At first, after calling a timeout, interim coach Chris Fleming stuck with White despite those struggles staying with Ice Trey. But after Trey continued to get what he wanted, Coach Fleming made the game-changing decision to sub in the 21-year-old rookie sensation Ayo Dosumu to guard Young. Ayo did a much better job guarding the all-star guard and generally made it a bit more difficult for the Hawks' offense to generate easy looks. In 26 games thus far, the 38th overall pick in this year's draft has been everything and more that Mark Eversley and Bulls fans could have hoped for. Dosumu was born and raised in Chicago, going to high school at Morgan Park. And when it came time to advance to the college level, the man stayed in state, moving down the road to the University of Illinois. Io would average 20 points on 49% shooting from the field and 39% from distance in 28 games for the Fighting Illini. The kid slowly morphed into a pro caliber talent throughout his three years in the NCAA, and by the time he was drafted, it was evident Dosumu was NBA ready, and that's what he displayed last night. Not only was his lengthy lockdown defense impressive, but the consensus All-American chipped in by making four of his six field goals. On the year in 21-22, Io's efficiency from college has translated to the pro level really nicely, as he's shooting 51.2% from the fields and 40% from deep in his first NBA campaign. As the game progressed in the first half, Chicago's bench plus DeRozan and White held serve against Atlanta's mostly reserve unit. But while Nick, Levine, and the versatile wing Javante Green were resting, the Bulls didn't even come close to falling off. In fact, during the second quarter, Chicago looked much sharper on both ends of the floor compared to how they looked with most of their starters on in the first. With five minutes left in the second frame, Zach Levine had checked back in at that point and debatably the league's best shooting guard started going off. Zach was slicing through the Hawks' game plan by knocking down some seamless pull-ups off the bounce, and the man was also exploding to the rim, aggressively finishing directly through the contact. 
As the clock wound down, Levine even knocked down a jumper as time expired despite having a defender draped all over him. At half, Zach was officially in a dominant scoring flow, having dropped 17 points in that second quarter alone, which reversed the momentum of the game in the Bulls' direction. Chicago owned the frame, winning the second by 11 points, and walked into the locker room confidently up 69-63. And as good teams often do, Chicago didn't get comfortable or proud of themselves after shifting momentum. When the third quarter kicked off, Chicago's lead expanded into double digits, and now it was Mr. White's turn to have a big quarter offensively. It's easy for a player to get down on themselves after the way Kobe was getting beat by Young in the first half, but instead of getting in his own head, Kobe woke up and responded with 10 points in the quarter, including a dunk after driving down the baseline. That just displays the mental fortitude of Kobe, who I went in depth on in this video, which you can watch right after this. White was looking self-assured and comfortable in his jumper, draining two triples to murder the Atlanta Hawks' defense when they helped off him, of course to guard one of Chi-Town's top options instead. The third-year man and product of North Carolina has struggled with his consistency, but the outing against Atlanta was the type of offense the Bulls need from him more often. Kobe's shown off in the past that he's capable of stretching the floor offensively when called upon and that he's generally capable of taking some pressure off Debo, Levine, and Vooch, who attract so much of the defense's attention. Towards the end of the third quarter, Nate McMillan would make an adjustment switching to a zone briefly, but the Bulls would immediately take advantage. My former Raptor, Matt Thomas, capitalized off the non-one-on-one -on -one defense by knocking down two shots from deep, pushing the lead all the way up to 16. But how you close quarters in this league means everything, and the Bulls played a bit sloppy to finish the third, and it opened up the door for the Hawks to cut the deficit back to single digits. And it was far from all fun and games from that point on for Bulls fans, as things got tense quickly in the fourth. Led mostly by the flamethrowing 22-year-old Cam Reddish, Atlanta began to shoot themselves back into it. Killer Cam went off for 11 points within the first six minutes of the quarter, and in a flash, it was a three-point game. Chicago had to sub in some of their starters back into the game to make sure Atlanta didn't ride the momentum to completing the comeback, but when the Bulls needed him most, it was their pickup at the deadline from last season and the former two-time All-Star Nikola Vucevic who stepped up. Nikola made back-to-back three-pointers to make it an eight-point game and settle things down a bit, but Atlanta just kept scratching and clawing as Young began to knock down shots and draw fouls, which made this one tough to predict down the stretch. But it was an interesting strategy by Chicago to have Javante Green guard Young down the stretch, even with Dosumu on the court. Once again though, Vucevic came up with plays to keep the Hawks at bay. He scored a clutch and one off an offensive rebound. Then with the shot clock winding down, he threw up a prayer from three and banked it in, extending the lead back to double digits with 315 left. Then after DeRozan nailed a step back jumper and a Vucevic free throw, Levine lost the ball on a possession, but it went straight to White in the corner. He rose up and splashed a three of his own, giving Chicago a 14 point lead with 119 to go, sealing the victory for the Bulls. White finished with 13 on 5 of 11 shooting while also adding 4 rebounds. Javante Green was the only Chicago scorer to not score in double digits, notching just 2 points, but he contributed in other ways with 6 rebounds and he also played solid defense throughout the whole game. Matt Thomas led the bench in scoring with 9 points, with 5 of his 6 attempts coming from distance. Dosumu pitched in with 8 points and 2 assists, and as I mentioned before, the man played crucial defense on Young in the first quarter to stop the Bulls from getting cooked early on. Troy Brown Jr. added 7, making one of his 4 attempts from downtown. On the other side for Atlanta, they were led by the 33 points from Cam Reddish, who hit 8 shots from 3-point land. Young had 29 in his return, including going 12 of 12 from the line. Bogdan Bogdanovic had 20 points, while Gorgie Jang had 12 points off the bench. This wasn't only a solid win for Chicago, but it displayed what's making them so tough to stop. With key contributors who fit in perfectly, like a seemingly elite wing defender already in Ayo and a sniper in Matt Thomas making timely plays, the Bulls constantly responded to the Hawks, and then their stars caught fire offensively at the perfect times. The role players are stepping up when one of the best role players they have in Alex Caruso is out, which is massive. But in terms of the top guys, it's undoubtedly a mesmerizing product to watch when all three of them are lighting it up, 
and it's definitely a scary combination for fans of other top East contenders to envision trying to slow down. Levine took over in the second, Vucevic in the fourth, and DeRozan was constantly humming from the mid-range all game as he usually does. It's now the second time in three games the Bulls have scored 130 or more, and they haven't scored less than 100 points in more than a month. The offense is heating up, and it's no coincidence that it's happening as soon as they get their main offensive guys back playing together. Chicago's record is now 21-10, and, and they return home for a game against these same Hawks. What's your favorite factor to the Bulls' attack? Two commenter shoutouts next time from last vid's question and this vid's question, so leave your take to compete in Community Speaks. Hope you guys have a great one. DFlow signing off.